Hello and welcome to Excel Power Pivot Training. My name is Kara Clifford and thank you for joining us today. Um, I'm here in San Francisco at the LearnIt headquarters and I'm looking forward to telling you a little bit about the powerful Excel add-in Power Pivot. We're going to go through a number of topics and I'll show you the agenda here. We're going to start with a quick introduction to Power Pivot, then we'll go into getting started. We'll see how we can use linked Excel tables in Power Pivot and how we can actually import data from a variety of sources. Finally, we'll create a pivot table from our Power Pivot data. So Power Pivot is a very powerful Excel add-in and it really does help get around the limitations we have out of the box with Microsoft Excel. Power Pivot was first released in 2012 for Excel 2010 and today during today's demo, I will be using Excel 2013. The first thing we're going to do is really talk a little bit about what Power Pivot can do for you. First off, Power Pivot helps you get around the limitations of Excel as far as the size of a worksheet. A regular Excel worksheet is just over a million rows, but with Power Pivot, we don't have those limitations. For any of you who have worked with Excel, when working with large data sets, you know things can get really slow. Writing a VLOOKUP or making a pivot table can take a lot of time. So Power Pivot makes it much quicker. We can solve our functions quicker, and we can also make large pivot tables without that uh, time as constraint that we have with the regular pivot uh, Excel. We're also going to see how we can actually build relationships from different tables within Excel. So no more going to the IT department and asking them to run a query on your databases. You can do that yourself using this powerful add-in. Right? So first thing I'm going to do is go and show you how um, we can add this add-in. You'll notice at the top of my ribbon here that my last tab is Acrobat. Right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to activate Power Pivot through the file menu. Now, for those of you working from a company computer, this may be something that you need to request from IT. So if you don't have it available, just send your IT department an email requesting the Power Pivot add-in. But for those of you that do have access, you'll go to the File menu and then into the Options. This will launch the Excel Options, where on the left-hand side, we have an Add-ins option. Down at the bottom, we'll use the drop-down to choose Com Add-ins, and then we'll select Go. You'll see that I have an option called Microsoft Office Power Pivot for 2013. Again, depending on what version, this would be different for you, though using 2016. I'm going to go ahead and place a check mark next to that and say OK. Within a second, I get a new tab at the top called Power Pivot. And this is where I will actually bring in all of my data. I'll add data models to the Power Pivot section, and I'll be able to build pivot tables off of that Power Pivot data. Now, this is a very simplified explanation of Power Pivot. It gets much more complicated, and I do encourage you guys to check out our e-learning videos on Power Pivot or sign up for one of the classes that we have. There's also a lot of great videos on YouTube that go into some more examples of using Power Pivot. But now that I have this tab at the top, I can start using Power Pivot to bring in lots of data. Now, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to open up a new workbook using a great keyboard shortcut, Control N, that always creates a new worksheet. And here I want to just show you how quickly Power Pivot can import millions of rows of data. I'm going to select the Power Pivot tab, and I'm going to choose Manage. One of the big advantages of Power Pivot is that you can bring data in from a number of different sources. You can import and combine sources from SQL, from Oracle databases, and from a number of other locations, such as information on the web, uh, CSV or text files, and even data that lives already in Excel. When I open up the Power Pivot Manage button, it gives me this smaller window, and you can see it popped up right over the top of my screen. From this Power Pivot window, I'm going to use the Get External Data. Now, this is a step that you'd be using if your data did not already exist in an Excel worksheet. Maybe it came from a database, or from a server, or from other sources. 
such as Oracle, Teradata, Sybase, you can see we have a number of different options and ways to import Excel data or data in general into Power Pivot. But I'm going to go ahead and pull in a data information from an Access database. And this particular file in Access has millions and millions of rows. Now, when you open Get External Data and you choose to import data from Access, it brings you to the Table Import Wizard. Here, I can use the Browse button to browse to my computer wherever that data happens to live. Now, this is an example file created by Microsoft called Contoso Sales. I'm going to select it and say Open. Now, some databases require that you log in with your username and password. This does not, so I don't need to fill out any of this bottom section, but that may be something that you need to do depending on where you're pulling the data from. I'm then going to go to the bottom and choose Next, where it's going to give me the option to import data by selecting the lists and tables that I want to import, or by writing a query or uploading a query. So if you have a query already written, you can easily import it into this wizard. But for me, I'm going to go ahead and select a list of tables and views to choose from the wizard. I can see that I've got a number of tables here, and I'm going to just go ahead and select a few of them and I'm going to say finish. Now if I wanted to, I could go in and filter these, not bringing in the entire table, just a portion of it, maybe uh, filter out some of the rows or some of the columns, but for this particular example, I'll just go ahead and import all of these different tables from Access. Now as you can see, the first few don't have that much data, and as I get to the last table, Fact Sales, we're already almost to a million rows, and now we're over. So you can see that it's importing this data very quickly. We've already surpassed the limit for regular Excel files of a million rows. So now I can see I've got about 2.28 million rows of data that I'm bringing in to Power Pivot. I'm going to go ahead and close this window once I get that green check mark saying it was a success. And I'll see that now my data actually lives in this Power Pivot window. And those five tables that I imported came through, including the one with over a million rows. Now, I want to show you one of the things that I love about Power Pivot, and that's the fact that I can actually create or view the relationships that existed within that database. So up along the ribbon, I'm going to select Diagram View, and this will actually show me those tables that I brought in and the relationships that exist. Now, Fact Sales is that large 2.28 million row table, and you can see that most of my relationships are built off this table. I have my relationship with Dim Product, and I can see that that relationship is highlighted when I hover over the connector. Here I have my Dim Date and the relationship is with the date key, and dim channel with the channel key, and then my dim product subcategory is related through that dim product table. So again, you can create your own relationships. So if some of my data lived in Access, other data lived in a SQL database, I can bring those all into the Power Pivot window and simply add my relationships by right-clicking and choosing Create Relationship. Now I'm going to do that on a simpler example right now in another worksheet. These tables are kind of a little overwhelming, so I'm going to go something a little bit simpler so we can focus on this amazing tool, Power Pivot. Now here I have a very simple set of data in Excel. Now it already lives in Excel, and this is one of those situations where many of my clients, many of the students in any of the classes that I teach, always want to know VLOOKUPs. And the main reason for wanting to use a VLOOKUP in a scenario like this is that you want to be able to add information that lives on another worksheet. So here I have a second tab in this workbook called Managers, and I can see that I've got my different departments and the manager's first and last name for that department. Now I could write a VLOOKUP that pulls the information using that department as the key, but one thing that Power Pivot does so well is it allows us to build pivot tables on multiple tables of data. So 
where in the past we would actually have to make all of our data exist on one worksheet, Power Pivot allows us to build relationships and then pivot on all of the data from a variety of tables and lists. So I have my data in Excel. I am going to first off add this data to the data model. And I'm going to do that from the Power Pivot tab, choosing Add to Data Model. Because I've selected inside of my data, it recognizes this list. And I can see that it's found the range of cells. And I'm going to make sure to let it know that this data set does have a header row. So I'm going to place a check mark next to that and say OK. It then launches the Power Pivot window where I can see that same information is brought into Power Pivot. And it converted that list to a table, making it dynamic. In other words, if any of my data changes in Excel, it'll automatically change here in my Power Pivot window table. I'm now going to go ahead and go to the second table where I have my list of managers. And I'm going to use the same steps, selecting Power Pivot and choosing Add to Data Model. Again, I want to make sure it knows that my data has headers. And now I'm going to go ahead and say OK. So now my Power Pivot window has not only the table with my managers, but it has the original payroll data set. If I'd like, I can rename these by right-clicking over the top and choosing Rename. Then hitting Enter to save that name. And I'll do that with both of my tables. So again, this is just a very simplified example to show you how easy Power Pivot can work and that it doesn't have to be huge, large, complicated data sets to get benefit from this amazing add-in. So now that I have my different data brought into Power Pivot, what I can do here is I can go ahead and build a pivot table off this data. I do that not by going back to Excel and inserting a pivot table, but by building a pivot table off the Power Pivot window option on the Home tab. When I select the bottom half of the Pivot Table button, I see that I can choose a pivot table, a pivot chart, and I can even add a combination. And these are really great. They really lock your pivot tables into place. And this is an ideal way to build dashboards. But I'm going to go ahead and just create a standard pivot table. It asks me where I'd like to place this pivot table. And I'll go ahead and put it on a new worksheet. So just like building a pivot table in Excel, I have built a pivot table, but this time I have actually two tables of data that I'll be using. And I can see that on the right hand side on my pivot table field list, I've got table one with all of the different payroll information and table two, my very simple manager table. So let's think of something simple like maybe how many um, employees we have in each department, right? I've got a number of employees, and if I wanted to include their division, I could add that, maybe their department. And I could even go in and add their other, uh, the department from the other table. But I'm missing an important step. That is that relationship between those two tables. You'll notice that in the top table, I have a department column. And in my second table, I also have a department column. These tables have not been related. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my Power Pivot window and go into that diagram view I showed you with Fact Sales. Now, for this to be of any use, you're going to need to make sure that all of the tables you've imported have relationships. So I'm going to go ahead, scroll down to my department, right click over the top of the column that I'm going to build the relationship between, and choose Create Relationship. I'll then select my second table, Managers, and choose the column that uses that same information. So now I have a relationship between the columns department. And when I move back to my pivot table and I add any of that additional information like department, I can see that I get all of that information added. Now I'm going to go ahead and see how many, I, uh, how many employees I have in each of our different departments. 
and I'm going to do that by adding a count of employees. I'll use their employee number as a count, and I can see that I was able, without using a VLOOKUP, to build a relationship between two tables in Excel using Power Pivot, and then pivot off that data. So again, this is a very simple example. Um, I could also include the name of the managers for each of those departments. And here I have all of that information showing the different managers and the account of employees in each department. Try Power Pivot on your own. For those of you using Excel 2010, you'll want to be sure to go online and search for the Power Pivot add-in. For those of you working at a um, company, you may need to request this powerful add-in from your IT department. But the benefits are endless, and again, this is just a quick little example of how to use Power Pivot with regular old Excel data and build pivot tables on multiple data sets without needing to require VLOOKUPs and all that manual labor. So thank you so much for joining me on our live YouTube channel, Excel Power Pivot. My name is Kara Clifford, and I invite you guys to uh, subscribe to our channel. We're always giving uh, specials away and discounts, and one that we have coming up is 50% off on all of our Learn at Any Time classes. We have a full e-learning curriculum all around Power Pivot, and I think it's a really great uh, example of this very important piece of Microsoft Power BI. If you go to learnatanytime.com slash Kara, you'll get 50% off on all of our e-learning. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you all have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend, whatever you happen to be doing.